Welcome to the award-winning Saints Happy Hour podcast. Seriously, this podcast has won awards? American standards are dropping every day. The show features Ralph, the best host in the world who can barely pronounce his own name, much less anyone else's. Marcus Colson, Colston, I mean, uh, Marcus Calloway. Dave is that dude who loves taking bathroom breaks. He's mad about almost anything, so make sure to lower your volume when he speaks. Put that freaking clown meme back up that I made. Jesus Christ. Andrew has sources, watches tapes, and knows football. He rarely shows up on time and wants to commit crimes to help the Saints win. Sean Payton would have done illegal things. Don't tell me I'm wrong, because you know it's true. Oh, and there's also Kevin, who is great at doing mock drafts, but struggles to actually watch Saints games or have a functioning relationship. Budrich wants to know how uh, the doctor's doing. That that ended. Anyway, grab a drink, sit back, and enjoy the insanity. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour Podcast. Kevin, it's not the breaking yes, news. Yes, Ralph. It's not the breaking news, Siren, because I'm hopped up on meds, NyQuil, all of it. My entire family is sick, so I just was slept to like 9:45 in the morning today. And the Saints God are do- for that. The Saints are doing breaking news. We we got to we got to move this along because my voice may or may not last. Uh so the Saints are doing breaking news and I'm sound asleep like a baby hopped up on meds. So they signed Cameron Jordan yep. to a 2-year contract extension, 27 and a half million dollars, like all of it's guaranteed. Wow. Um, which is the most guarantees ever for a defensive player his age. Because he's going into year 13 with the Saints. This is his, this is his fourth contract with the Saints overall. His third, as he likes to say, earned contract, right? And to start with, it's really cool because he, he said in the press conference, he's like, listen, I, I wanted to get to 10. I wanted to get to 12 years. I want to get to 15 years. Then I'm probably out. And he's going to be, like, fantastic on TV. Like, we can all see it, right? He's just going to transition into TV and be great. So he's going to play for 15 years, probably his whole year, career with the Saints, I would think. Or he'll just keep playing great and, and want to add more years and he'll be a Saint. So this is awesome. He's going to, this year, he's going to pass Ricky Jackson's unofficial sack record if he gets like eight sacks. Because Ricky Jackson, he passed the official one last year. But if you add Ricky Jackson's rookie year, which NFL doesn't count sacks from that year. I don't know why. Weird. They know they know the number. Everybody went back and wait, watched they, the tape. Wait, they know, the, they know all the numbers from the year before, but they won't count that. They won't count them. They're like, ah, sacks was an official stat. 1981 and we don't we are 82 and we don't count 1981 uh, stats or whatever so that, like they know all of it. somebody went back and watched all the tape they had so like from all the nfl games from like 1960 something onward they know they know your sack total but anyway so cam jordan's gonna break the unofficial record if he if he gets to eight i think he needs eight and a half and he's gonna pay, he's gonna become second in most saints games played behind drew and by the way, if he finishes out this contract, he should pass Breeze uh, in that total, two, 228, if he can stay healthy and pass. So he's going to own like all the longevity records, the sack record, which is probably like, which is probably the most prestigious Saints record on defense they have because the Saints' history at corner sucks. So like the interception record, it's nice, but it's not like some sort of standard that'll get you into the hall of fame right cam jordan he gets to 125 sacks after this deal which you know you think if or 130 he's getting it in a can so i mean your thoughts on it kevin i i think it's tremendous and i don't really view it as a risk like he's not i mean knock on whatever but like the only injury he had was the eye injury and he was ticked off that the Saints made him break his streak last year. Remember, he was spilling the tea all over Twitter. He was mad that they wouldn't let him play and keep his streak alive. I, I mean, part of me wonder, like, how much of that is he's just a gamer and wants to, <laughs> and just wants to battle through, and then how much of that is, you know, maybe some sort of contract. Uh, what do you call it? Like you reaching and 
you reach a level and and it's a kick up or whatever incentive or an, no i just think incentive or an enhancer i don't know but but that's neither here nor there the fact is he got he wanted to play and they had to keep him out but i'm happy about it i mean mm-hmm. the numbers to me i don't, i kind of don't care because it's loomis it's yes, loomis and it's right, loomis right. if this was any other team if this was any other team you know maybe i would look mm-hmm. at that and be like well how does this affect the cap how does this do that I don't pay attention to that anymore. I, I don't like. I've been a, I've paid attention enough to know that the numbers are like. Here we go. Look, I'm writing. <laughs> I'm writing numbers yeah. down on a sheet of paper, and guess what? It don't mean jack shit. It's just numbers on a piece of paper. It's irrelevant. So. Yeah, like- that's like, how I. That's how I. I look at the the contract. Anybody responding to Adam Schefter or Pro <laughs> Football Focus or these other people saying, "Oh, it's a terrible contract," this and that, brother. This guy is an eight-time Pro Bowler. He's been to the Pro Bowl six years in a row, or he's been named to the Pro Bowl six seasons in a row. Uh, like all pro. <clears throat> excuse me, all pro three times. Like, I, I don't know what you want. And he's still playing well in the year 12 of his uh, year 12 of his he's career. Still, he's there's still. no sign. There's no sign of a decline of a gentle decline or anything like that. Like, granted, my worry is that. Is that when the decline comes, it'll be immediate. And, and there, there won't be a gentle decline. It'll just be yeah. he's just fallen off and he's completely washed. But. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's... you still have to take you still have to pay the man and take the chance uh, and, and reward him for how he's played. And the expectation that he can still play again, it's only a two year deal. Yeah. And you look at the depth and chart. The, the, again, the, I'm looking at the depth got chart. Read, you got because look, you got Nathan Shepard and Kalen Saunders and Carl Granderson and him. Those are your four starters on the defensive line. You got, uh, I, I keep wanting to call him Cap Sason, but I know that's not how you pronounce his name. You got him, you got Brissy, Malcolm Roach, and Fosky Bear. Cam Jordan is the, an- like, he's one of the team captains. He's the anchor on the defense. Mm-hmm. You need that guy, even if he regresses a little. He's still important to that defense. The experience he brings, the leadership he brings, the locker room presence that he brings. That's the guy you want coaching up or 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 bigging up uh your guys like Brissy and Foskey. Like you want that. Well you, you like, like you want Cam Jordan on that wall. You need mm-hmm. Cam Jordan on and that here's, wall. Here's the thing with Cam Jordan. I saw it the other day. It was it was a it was not PFF, but it was a advanced football. It might have been uh, sharp football or one of the one of the metric nerd places. And and we we always we hate the nerds when we hate them, but when they say something nice about the Saints, we're like, ah, oh, we like them now. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was an interesting thing: is they rated all the edge run defenders in the NFL, and you know who was freaking number one? Hmm. Cam Jordan. Like hmm. he's he's still. I know fans, we care about sacks, 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 defensive end. Cam Jordan is still elite of elite against the run. And guess what head coach slash defensive coordinator cares more about his defensive ends, quote unquote, setting the edge? Guess who that is, Kevin? Dennis Allen. That's right. If you can't set the edge, you can't play defensive end for Dennis Allen. And Cam Jordan going into the year 13 is still doing it better than anybody else. So my worry is like, even if his pass rush sort of dries up or whatever, as long as he's able to play, yeah, he's going to be good against the run. And guess what? 14 million for like a six sack defensive end that is elite against the run is, per- is perfectly reasonable. And guess what? We haven't even seen the TV money yet, like the YouTube money. Like, that hasn't even really hit yet, Kevin. This contract, if Cam Jordan, let's just say he's at nine sacks this year and nine sacks next year, the Saints paying him 
14 million dollars will be looked at as a dollar store price bargain because the money in the NFL it doesn't go the the, the cost doesn't go down like now we say it's like little over a million dollars per sack probably in a year it's going to be oh you're a 10 sack guy that's 18 million so question about you you mentioned the uh the franchise sack record so I'm on Pro Football Reference. They've got Ricky Jackson at 123. Oh, they add they added it in. See, and Cam at 115 and a half. That's right. Uh, and they say that these numbers go back to 1982. Um, but and so I just I wanted know. to see like how many sacks uh, Cam would need. So it is eight. If he gets eight solo sacks. He'll, he'll he'll pass Ricky Jackson, but here's the crazy thing: um, Cam Jordan has recorded 424 solo tackles. <laughs> guess, guess how many recorded solo tackles Ricky Jackson has? Dude, it's got to be like 700, maybe. How much? I should have I should have prefaced this by saying whatever number you guess, you're gonna be way off. What is it? One thousand one hundred. Wow. Four. Wow. So I, I mean, but here's, Ricky here's, Jackson, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great as we wrap up. This is a great point for you to bring up Ricky Jackson because Ricky Jackson they didn't play the same position, but they no. are very, but they are very similar in this way. Defensive players in the NFL to be awesome after 30 are, yeah. unic are unicorns. So, it, okay, I tell you what, if you want to look at defensive end, the hot, so defensive end, hit the, the uh, comp would be Wayne Martin. Okay. He played from 89 to 99 with the Saints, 171 games, uh, 82 and a half sacks in that span. 462 recorded solo tackles. So Cam's already got him beat in, in every other metric. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. Yeah, the only thing is, is the solo tackle. So if he gets, he's got to get four, 39 more solo tackles, and then he'll have eclipsed. Uh, no, not 39. I'm sorry. 532. So he'll have to get 100 and. That's a, ooh, that's a lot of solo tackles. 110 more, ooh, 109 more, and then, and then he'll have tackles. done it. That's a lot of solo tackles in three years. But your point to that is, like, post-30, yeah. Cam Jordan is incredible. Post, like, Ricky Jackson, I would argue, is the best over 30-year-old linebacker in the history of NFL. Like, Lawrence Taylor was kind of washed at, like, 30, 31. Ricky Jackson at, like, 33, 34 is getting, like, 10 and a half sacks and being all pro. So, like, and that's right. the thing with Cam. Like, if you look at him... It's like he's just like a blue flame. Like he just even even in the COVID year, we're right. Like, I mean, there's nothing like honestly, Ricky Jackson and Cam Jordan. Th those are, it's like it's a pair of supernovas next to one another. Because again, yeah. the closest ones after that are Wayne Martin with 82 and a half, Pat Swilling mm -hmm. 76 and a half, and Will Smith 67 and a half. Yeah, and even I mean those. I mean Ricky Jackson and Cam Jordan. It's basically like. It's just, it's imagine two horses mm -hmm. beating everybody else by like, you know, 10, 12 lengths down at the fairgrounds. And, but it's a, it's a, it's a neck and neck race with them. I mean, the, the dude hasn't had less than seven and a half sacks since his rookie year. But the point is like, even the, 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 the 2020, the COVID year where we were like, he had like one, one or two sacks with like five games to go and we're like oh maybe cam maybe this is he he's finally like hit the wall and and that thing and then he got the covid and we were like oh he got the good maybe he got that good covid because he like went boom boom and had like six sacks in the last like four weeks mm -hmm. and, and you know just in a, in a general sense I know certain fans are like, listen, I just want to win, and we all want to win, and we and we just want the best players and all this. But but there's something to me 
about certain players for the Saints that have been a long time. And and in this day and age, like players don't start and finish with one team. Like it just doesn't happen. Great players, no. even like JJ Watt and and for the Saints, you know, they're probably going to have their greatest quarterback, Drew Brees, basically start. I mean, he played in San Diego, but he didn't he he started his true greatness in New Orleans, finished it in New Orleans, finished the Saints. Cam Jordan's going to start Saints finish things entirely uh his career there jimmy graham is coming back and i think that's the thing that i think the as, as fans it most excites us even though we know jimmy graham's not going to be great this year like we the new orleans loved him the most so the fact that he gets to end here in the place where he did his greatest work and we loved him the most like that's cool and i just think it's gonna be cool like if cam jordan can stay healthy and in at the end of 2025 his final game, he can do the little presentation and we can give him the plaque and the, and the cake and all that. Like, that's cool. As a fan, yeah. I, I like that. So let me, let me throw, let me say this. Cause I, I, I think you might, you might be uh, misremembering the, the, the numbers on the COVID stuff. Okay. So in 2020, and let me go back to this 2020, he finished with seven and a half sacks that was not the COVID year. Okay. The COVID year was the next season, 2021. Oh, that's right. So he's I'm, got, so I'm looking at his, I'm looking right. at his numbers. He's got one, two, three, four. He's got four sacks through the first 12 weeks. Has a did not play. There's the COVID. Comes back. And in the final four weeks, two that's sacks. Right. You're right. That's right. Two sacks. Three and a half sacks. Yes, right. One sack. That's so right. he got seven and a half. He got eight and a half sacks in the final four weeks <laughs> of 2021. You're right. You're right. I, and it was basically like, you know, don't yeah. fucking play me now. Like, 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 That's like, right. don't doubt me now. And That's the right. guy still made the Pro Bowl. That's right. I you you're right. The, I was thinking he, he got COVID when the world was caring about COVID, but he got he actually got it the next year. He got, right he got, and, he, and late and late in twenty twenty. Yeah, he got he he, he, he got it. He, he missed the Miami. He was part of the Miami game, I think, where like everybody had it. Like right, and they, like they were playing Ian Book, and that I think that was the week that Cam Jordan missed. Maybe not. But no, Maybe that not. was the Jets game. Okay. That yeah, but, but you, you're Saints right. Won, it was it was the Saints it, won that one 30 to nine. The Miami game they lost twenty to three. No, you're right, and and, and he was uh, already back by then. So let me see who the hell was playing quarterback. But but to your point, and it's even better. Ian like Book, <laughs> Ian Book. But but just to just to put a bow on this, yeah, it is, um, you know he's 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 Ring of Honor Saint. He's probably. I mean, he's he's gonna be. I, I mean, I would say if you do the Mount Rushmore, right? You got four. You got Drew. Um, you got Ricky Jackson. You got Willie Rofe, and you're probably gonna have to have Cam Jordan because they're all yeah. gonna be. In, they're feels, all gonna all gonna be. It in Cam. feels weird now. No, no, no. But but this is a good feeling. Is it feels weird now that we're at a position where we where. You know, you can you can take Archie off that thing. Right. You know, hell, look, I would argue he didn't belong on it in the first place. I know that makes me right. a uh, like more a, a, a heathen to some, but you you know, Sam Mills is off of it. You know, yeah. Deuce is probably off of it. Like so many other players that that Are that great. over the years yeah. like swilling off With of it. Defensive Player of the Year, yeah, right. And it's like now now we're getting okay. Breeze is on there. Breeze a permanent resident. Cam probably going to wind up on it. Ricky will probably stay on it. Rofe. And 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 then and then the fourth what what you said Willie Rofe and and yeah. it's like I mean who are you debating taking off that? You who know, are you really kicking are you off? Taking more, are you taking Morton off? Are you taking Rofe exactly? Off? If, if Jari Evans makes the Hall of Fame eventually, which he might because he was a best guard, let's like him up. You know, uh, you know maybe right. maybe maybe since we're feeling great today, maybe Michael Thomas rebounds and puts together three four great years. You know. But it's but it's a it's a great thing to have because people like me and Kevin who are old, where we're like a Mount Rushmore. You want that problem. You yeah, want that want problem. That. You want to be able to point back thirty years or whatever it is. Well, shit, we're hitting. We're getting close to forty now. God damn. You point back thirty plus years and say, man, these guys were dope. They were great. 
they, 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 they made this team watchable. They made this team competitive, all this other kind of stuff. And then you get this whole new crop of guys who were like, this, they, they dominated, they did this, they did That's that, right. blah, 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 blah. And it's like you, it, and it's great because it forces you, it'll eventually force us to say, let's, ki- let's knock off the Mount Rushmore nonsense and let's just do like a top 10 and, yes, and, and right. make sure we're trying to give our flowers to as, many, to as many deserving people as possible. I mean, the Saints Hall of Fame, when they did it, they were one of the first teams, and I'll end on this, when they were one of the first teams to actually do like a team Hall of Fame. And they did it. I want to say like at the beginning of Moral, where they had just like just made like one playoff spot. So like it was a national joke. It was like the Saints have a freaking Hall of Fame. They've made founded in 1987. Yeah, they they founded in 1987. They hadn't even made the playoffs yet. And people were like, the Saints made a Hall of Fame. They haven't even had a winning season. They haven't even had had uh made the playoffs. And they have a Hall of Fame. Who are they gonna put in it? And like it was kind of like you know, it was fun. It was great in these these historic saints. But like now, you look at them and you'd be like, "No, if you you wouldn't get in now." But like you say, it's a it's a it's a great thing that the Saints have had all these people. Nineteen eighty seven was the first winning season in franchise that's history. Right. That's right. So they celebrated with a Hall of Fame. Yeah, they're like, "We're building a Hall of Fame. Who are we putting into it? Ah, we'll find some people." And guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to the free version. Uh, if you do, and please support the podcast. We have all kinds of awesome perks that patrons get. You don't get to have to listen to the ads. You get access to the Discord. You get a swag box, and you support the show. You allow us to feed Thomas with the finest Polish meat and cheeses until his body bursts. And it's just a great way to support the podcast you love. So go to Saints Happy Hour, support Saints Happy Hour, and until next time, the bar is closed.